Thanks, Claire. Yes, you see, I am here with uh, Minister Roger O'Gorman, whose department has been tasked with providing accommodation for the Ukrainian refugees who have came to Ireland. Uh, Minister, thank you for joining us this evening. I want to get straight into the numbers that the Tanish just spoke about today. 20,000 by the end of this month, 40,000 by the end of April. How many of those do you think are going to need accommodation? Look, uh, it's, it's undoubtedly a, a significant challenge. We've had 10,000, uh, 10,100 10, 10, as, of, as of yesterday evening. And I think the, the key focus right now and over the last two weeks has been securing short-term accommodation in hotels. And we've secured just over 2,200 2, hotel rooms to accommodate people for that short-term need. The next step in the process is to, to provide more medium-term security for them. And we're looking at the pledge list, as you know, we're doing in conjunction with the Red Cross. 20,000 people have made pledges there, primarily of accommodation. Of those, about 4,000 are vacant units. And that's what we're focusing on first. And we have a team contacting people, looking to get people into those, uh, those units as quickly as possible. And then we'll be on, moving on to looking at shared accommodation, where people have offered a room maybe in, in a house. But in terms of people who've arrived so far, about 40 to 50 per cent have required accommodation. Do you expect that percentage to increase? I would expect it to increase as we go on. We've seen certainly in the, the, initial, the initial two weeks a very significant number of the people coming to Ireland were coming here because they had family members here already and they sought a, a accommodation with their family members. So originally only one third maybe were seeking accommodation, two thirds were living with family members. As I said, it's gone to about 50, 50, 50 now and we would accept, expect the number of people needing uh, accommodation, needing the state support in, in, in getting shelter will increase uh, as numbers increase. Um, your uh, colleague, cabinet colleague today, um, Minister Charlie McConnell, mentioned a figure of 200,000 potentially um, who may flee to Ireland and, and seek refuge here. Do you think that number is realistic? Well, look, I, I think Ireland will traditionally take about 2% of, uh, across the EU of, of, uh, of the number of migrants in, in a particular crisis. So right now we've uh, 3.4 million Ukrainians have fled the country. So that would equate with about 68,000. Now that's still a very significant challenge. And, and we're under no illusions about that. And that's why I suppose the approach being adopted is an all of government approach, with my own department dealing with that, that short term housing need uh, and, and other departments looking out in terms of what we can do in terms of maybe looking at buildings, large buildings uh, owned by religious congregations, owned by other state agencies. And I know the Department of Housing did a call out to local authorities across the country and they've identified a list of maybe 500 buildings that could potentially be repurposed for medium term accommodation. But what do you think is more realistic, 68,000 or 200,000? Well, look, it is difficult to speculate in terms of, of the current crisis. We've seen how significantly the numbers have, 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 have raised in, in the last number of weeks. I think it very much depends on whether the conflict remains in, in, in the kind of the existing centres. I look, I think it's fair to say if you, if you saw a, a Russian offensive towards Odessa or some other major population centre, that would probably have a, a significant increase in the number of people internally displaced within Ukraine, but also the number of people leaving the, the country. Uh, you mentioned there are the short term solutions. What do you mean by short term? What length of time can we expect people to be living in this type of accommodation? Yeah, well, look, I suppose we have to be flexible because we're, we're, we're aware and, and we're, 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 I suppose, taking up all offers of accommodation because mm -hmm. of, of, the, of the scale of, of, of the crisis. It's a wartime situation one, one none of us ever thought we, we, we'd, we'd see. But I think the short term accommodation in a number of weeks primarily looking at the at the hotel accommodation and then looking at the, those offers of, of, uh, of um, those pledged offers in terms of sharing homes uh, or, or vacant homes I think we'll primarily be asking people to commit to up to a year on, on those uh, uh, and then in terms of the other uh, uh, aspects that we're looking at again kind of a year a year plus these are these repurposed buildings yes yeah. So we're talking about old schools, old convents, perhaps places where you know vaccinations took place. That type of idea. Yeah, look, I, I think we're we're looking at all options right now. Um, I, I think we're going to have to be flexible here. We're, we're going to have to repurpose some 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 existing buildings, recognising the need to, to provide people with shelter, but also recognising the need that we need to be able to do this uh, at a rapid pace, uh, particularly if we do see uh, significant increases in numbers over the next number of weeks. But as the Tanishta um, said today. It's unlikely you're going to be able to provide the type of accommodation you 
would like for these people? Well, look, again, we have to recognise this is a wartime situation. This is a crisis response that Ireland, that all other EU member states are, 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 are undertaking. Uh, you know, this situation is, is far from ideal. But I think, you know, Ukrainian refugees are coming here. They're looking for mm. safety. They're looking for shelter. And that's what we'll seek to provide them with. Uh, when I hear about these repurposed buildings, I can't help but think of the direct provision centres um, that you've committed to shut down. They're very similar. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, agree with that. Um, and I think one of the, the other core differences, of course, is that one of the key problems with direct provision was the isolation, that people were kept at a distance, whereas everything we've done in terms of our response to Ukraine is about integration. People are entitled to get a PPS number. People are entitled to enter the education system. People are entitled to take up a job mm -hmm. here. Ukrainians are being, are being treated as, uh, as EU citizens. I think that will be really important in terms of ensuring there is integration for as long as, as, as people are, are, are here uh, and hopefully you know, put them in a strong position once peace returns to Ukraine, U Ukraine and they can return home again. But are you concerned, given the pressure that is on this government to um, respond to the crisis in Ukraine and to provide accommodation um, for those who have fled, that the accommodation that we will provide will perhaps not be suitable for the children who are coming over from Ukraine? Well, look, we'll put in place all measures to, to support children to ensure that they can access uh, education, be it primary, post-primary or indeed preschool. Um, but look, no one can be un under any doubt of the scale of the challenge that Ireland faces, that all EU member states face, and indeed, you know, smaller countries like Moldova, as you know, we offer to take and, and will be taking 500 uh, Ukrainian refugees from Moldova because it has, as, as a non-EU country, it has an even kind of mm. lesser infrastructure to, 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 to support the, the huge influx that it has faced as a, as a country yeah. immediately adjacent to Ukraine. Uh, but you'll accept, Minister, that there's a particular difficulty here in Ireland, given how dysfunctional the housing system has been over the last number of years and given the difficulties uh, this government has faced and previous governments in building up housing capacity. Mm. Well look there is a challenge here uh, and we are looking at all options in terms of accommodating people that's what we've done up to now we're getting this amazing support from the Irish people in terms of, 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 of the pledged, uh, pledged accommodation and we're looking beyond that in terms of con considering um, uh, how, we, how we repurpose all relevant buildings buildings to, to ensure that we can provide for the numbers of people who we expect to arrive here. That's uh, the short and medium term solution and the long term solution? Well look, we're, we're working in the context of the, 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 the temporary protection directive and that's looking from uh, initially uh, giving um, temporary protection status to Ukrainians for one year and that can be extended up to up to three years. Uh, um, I, I, I think we're, we're all hoping of course that we, there will be a, a diplomatic so a solution achieved in Ukraine within, within that time period but we have to be planning within that particular period. All right, we're going to leave it there, but Minister Roderick O'Gorman, thank you for your time this thank evening. You.